So evidence clear, right? I mean, we could go on and on and on showing all the evidence for China's guilt, but I think you get the point. All right, and there's no evidence on the other side that China is somehow not guilty for this. CBS News doesn't want to hear it. CBS News on 60 Minutes, which is very major television news program, highly respected, been around for a long time. 60 Minutes is doing its level best to get China off the hook and to actually place blame, not just on Europe, but even on the United States. So just listen to the kind of language they use to cover for China. Why did the president just cancel DOSAC's funding? It's the kind of politics which might seem ill-advised in a health crisis. President Trump is blaming China's government for the pandemic. The outbreak was first detected in the city of Wuhan. The administration has said at times the virus is man-made or that, if it's natural, it must have leaked out of a Chinese government lab. Both the White House and the Chinese Communist Party have been less than honest. And so, in China and in the U.S., the work of scientists like Peter Daszak is being undercut by pandemic politics. So, just stop it right there for a moment. You see what he does? He says, so, the big dishonesty here is that the United States said that this might have come from a lab which by the way, every single day, it seems more and more likely that this virus came from the lab as, as not just senators, but as other scientists have been talking about as well. And he says, but look, and maybe China hasn't been totally honest, but it's mostly the, uh, the examples I'm going to give you are how the United States hasn't been honest. And so at the very least we can say both sides haven't been honest. It's this false equivalency between China, which created the virus one way or another, whether it was made in nature and then observed in the Wuhan laboratory or whether it it was made in nature and just happened to escape into the world because of these Wuhan wet markets, because of these unsafe uh, food practices, which by the way, does not seem very likely. But even if it were, that is China's fault and they're lying about it. And then the United States calls them out for it, but because it's not 100% certain that that's what happened because we don't know because China covered it up. Then you're saying the United States is also dishonest. Bizarre behavior, especially for an allegedly American television news program. Then he tries to pull out and say, look, there's really just this third party called the scientists and they're the ones that we need to follow. And both of the political actors, China and the United States, they're basically both the same. And so uh, don't give the U.S. any more credit than you give to China. Then he goes on to defend even more the alleged objectivity, untouchability of the scientists. The Wuhan Institute is internationally respected. Two years ago, a team from the U.S. Embassy visited. That team sent a cable to Washington concerned that one lab in the complex had a serious shortage of trained investigators. But the cable, first reported by the Washington Post, emphasized the Wuhan Institute is critical to future outbreak prediction and prevention. So what this guy just did is what I call the compliment sandwich. It's what a lot of flatterers will do too. And it's what a lot of PR people will do. If they want to break some bad news, they'll say a really a good thing. Then they'll put the criticism in there and then they'll say another really good thing. So he opens up, he says, the Wuhan Institute of Virology is internationally respected. Uh, No, I don't think it is. I think actually it's the least respected lab in the world right now. I think people hate the damn Institute of Virology in Wuhan because it gave us this global plague. So no, it's not internationally respected. Also, how do I know it's not internationally respected? Because the very next thing he says is, you know, some, uh, some U.S. inspectors pointed out that it wasn't very safe, but, but, but it was only one lab and it wasn't all, it wasn't all the places and, but yeah, it wasn't very safe. Well, okay, well, if it's not very safe, then how, how on earth would you call it internationally respected? And actually the people who pointed out that it wasn't safe were international in China. And then they say, but it's very important. This, this lab is very important in fighting diseases. No, it clearly isn't. It would appear that the lab is very important in spreading diseases. So uh, one good way to fight those diseases might be to shut down the lab and not fund it as we in the United States did. And as a lot of people, including Dr. Fauci, seem to be involved with this decision to fund the laboratory. But that's the compliment sandwich. It's a really great lab. Yeah, okay, they might have started this global pandemic, but it's a really great lab. 
Then we get to the real criticism of America. We, so far, we haven't had any criticism of China, just about. But then we get to the criticism of America, the victim of this crime. China's the perpetrator. America's the victim. CBS blames the victim. I mean, this, we are now in a case where you have a rapist and a victim and CBS six, 60 Minutes is covering it. And they say, well, she was wearing an awfully sk- short skirt. Well, she shouldn't have been out in that neighborhood at night. I mean, that, that is the kind of victim blaming. You hear that phrase from the left a lot? This is a perfect example of that. Victim blaming from the mainstream media. You have the compliment sandwich, then CBS gets to the hard work of blaming America. EcoHealth's work with Wuhan ended one week after Mr. Trump's briefing room pledge when the NIH revoked the grant. Initially, President Trump praised China, but in the following weeks, Testing in the U.S. failed to catch up to the need. Vital equipment was short. Bodies filled refrigerated trailers. And science was continuously challenged. As the U.S. led the world in illness and death, the White House moved the focus to the Chinese government. Nothing that he just said is true. Nothing. I don't think one syllable of that was true. Initially, He blames America for defunding the Wuhan laboratory as if this is some great tragedy. You know what? If you start a global pandemic, if you're, and I'm not saying they constructed the virus, this is the left wing trick. They say there is no evidence that they constructed the virus in the lab. Nobody's saying they constructed the virus. We're simply saying that the virus was very likely present in the lab and may have escaped. And a lot of evidence is suggesting that that was the case. They're saying, they're, they're trying to obviously fight a straw man because they can't argue against that pretty salient observation. He says, defunding the Wuhan lab was a terrible idea. If starting a global pandemic is not enough to get your lab defunded, then there is no criterion for getting your lab defunded. Of course we should have done that. Then, he says, the bodies started piling up in the United States as the United States led the world in death and carnage. No, we didn't. China did. But China is lying about their numbers. You can follow every other country on earth. You look at the progression of the virus. It goes up, 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 right? And then maybe there's a little plateau, but it keeps following this pattern. With China, it goes up, up, up. And then one day it just completely drops down. Now, do you think that's because the Chinese people have some amazing fact of their biology that all on one day just shuts down viruses? Do you think that the Chinese have some amazing magic, some wizardry where they wave a wand and then just one day magically the virus goes away? Or is the communist party lying about their numbers? Guess what? It's the latter. How do we know that? They actually admitted they were lying about the numbers. (laughs) They're still lying, but they admitted that the numbers out of Wuhan were not true. So that total, total shill for the the Chinese Communist Party. Then he keeps going on and says, science was being denied in the United States. Science was being denied. Who's denying science here? The the one who believes that the virus just magically disappeared in China one day, the one who believes that the laboratory that very likely started this pandemic still should be funded. Which science is being denied? Which model? Because all the models contradicted each other and it turns out they were all wrong too. Who who is denying science? He, of course, is treating science as though it's a sort of religious faith. You could could be a denier, but then you're a heretic. You ought to be burned at the stake practically. When in fact, science, oh, we could do a whole episode on the word science. The word science just means knowledge, right? It comes from shire, the Latin word shire, to know. And the, the word has been so politicized now that one, one uh, political interest group, the, these materialists, people who engage in a very modern study of empirical material investigation, have now uh, m- monopolized the entire word for knowledge. That's a whole other issue. But it, it does play into the politics here. Because what he is saying when he talks about science being denied is, we know everything. We, know it. we, ha- we have a monopoly on the facts. We have a monopoly on information. And it's being denied by mean old conservatives like Donald Trump. And that is why the U.S. has led the world in death and destruction, none of which is true. And then he he takes one final swipe to defend China. That's where this began. Last Sunday, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo attempted to resurrect a debunked theory that the virus was man-made in China. There it is. Did I predict it? I predicted it. 
It's a debunked theory that the virus was man-made. First of all, that's not debunked. How do you debunk that theory? We know very little about this virus to begin with. But second of all, nobody's saying it was man-made. We're saying it had something to do with the laboratory. Those are two completely different things. And because the CCP's lapdogs in the American media can't actually argue against what appears to be pretty likely that the, the lab had something to do with the virus, they try to argue against this straw man. 